You might see state diagrams referred to as state chart diagrams or state machine diagrams, but whatever you call them, state diagrams show the behavior of a system. For example, you can create state diagrams to show an object's behavior throughout a set of use cases. You can use state diagrams to show the behavior of a class, a subsystem, or the system as a whole. The UML allows two kinds of state diagrams. The first kind is behavioral state diagrams, and these show a specific implementation of elements such as objects. And most of the movies in this section will be talking about behavioral state diagrams. The second kind is protocol state machines. These are not intended to be implemented. Instead, they describe event protocol. That is, they show sequences of events of states and transitions without showing an object's actual behavior. And later on, we'll have a movie that is dedicated specifically to protocol state machines. So state diagrams don't have a ton of elements. You show a state using a rounded rectangle, as in these examples here. And the rectangle must display the name of the state. So it could be on and off, uh, waiting, active. You can also compartmentalize the state symbol into a number of different sections. And in those sections, you can show variables and activities. And those are optional. These open arrows, like this one, represent transitions. And a transition simply shows change from one state to another, from a source state to a target state. You can label transitions, as you see here, with uh, three elements, trigger, guard, and effect. This is called the transition signature, and it's optional. You can put part of the signature in, you can put the whole thing in, you can leave it out. Uh, the different elements of the transition signature include the trigger, which you also might see referred to as an event, but those mean the same thing. And the trigger is simply some event that initiates a change of state that causes the object to change from this state to that state. So a trigger might include um, a time event, a signal, a call, a change. Some event like that could be a trigger. Next comes the guard, and the guard is very similar to the guard condition in activity diagrams. You show a guard condition by enclosing it in square brackets, as you can see here. And a guard is a Boolean condition that indicates whether the transition can proceed. So if the condition is true, then yes, the transition can happen. If the guard condition is false, then the transition cannot take place. Then you have a forward slash, and following that is the effect. You might see the effect also referred to as an action or an activity, and again, those all mean the same thing. And the effect is behavior that happens during the transition, something that happens to the object as it tr makes its transition from one state to another. Trigger signatures may include multiple events and parameters, and as I said earlier, all parts of the trigger signature are optional. So let's look briefly at a very simple example. This is for a refrigerator light, and this refrigerator light can have two states, off and on, and it can respond to two events, open door and closed door. And you can see from the direction of the transitions that if the state is off and the open door event happens, the state changes to on. If the state is on and the closed door event happens, the state changes to off. So in a state diagram, different states basically show the different ways that an object reacts to events. And if you keep that in mind, that makes reading and creating state diagrams much simpler.